Hey guys, Tyro here, bringing you a 4v4 today. We are on Stips, playing a few days morning. On the right, we have Carry On SC Soviet, who has NKVD, Armored Assault, and Soviet Industry, along with Rayon as the US Forces, who has Recon Support, Infantry, and Heavy Cavalry as US Forces. Got Brosfast down here as the Soviets, who has Tank Hunters, Armored Assault, and Soviet Industry, and finally Antaria, who has Vanguard, all artillery and commandos as the Brits. On the left, we have Eiseldur as OKW, who has Breakthrough, Special Operations, and Luftwaffe Ground Forces. Von Aston is also there, who has Jaeger Infantry, Blitzkrieg, and Jaeger Armor. Scotch as the Austria who has Lightning War elite troops and Jaeger armor and finally Nagano who has Jaeger armor lightning war and Jaeger infantry so apparently this is from the 4v4 new meta tournament I don't know any details about that tournament whatsoever apparently this is game two and uh, yeah we've got the CB clan obviously very strong clan I've featured you know various met Matchups with them, always a uh, top level play from them in team games. Against this team here, which has uh, three top 20 1v1 players, and uh, Icelander, who's currently rank 1 in 2v2 with both allies and axis. So, <laughs> and that is uh, quite the resume for both teams. And look forward to how they get on. It looks like the battle for the island going down, as often happens on steps. Looks like the allies are sending uh, perhaps three three men down to the south and the axis only have two down here at the moment but this machine gun is in a nice position over here We've got another machine gun down here as well meanwhile in the north we've got the M3 very important if you're Soviets in this one Get an M3. It's very, very strong in steps in the north. Well played by Carry On. Because the, the retreat paths from this is just so low, you can just chase squads down and retreat, get wipes very easy. Very good mobility. It's a very wise idea. Okay, we've got some maxims now. So he's trying to scout with the universal carrier, trying to find the location of these machine guns, and then uh, so he doesn't have to retreat an infantry squad. Quite well played there by Ontario. Now we've got some mortars joining in on the front for both sides, trying to flush out these machine guns. It looks like the Allies, you know, they lost the middle completely, but do seem to have a stronger hold on the south right now, but. Now, like, the Axis have actually got superior fuel control so far. Right, most of the action is on the island, that often happens on steps. Yeah. Pinned, has to retreat. Could even get wiped here if he's unlucky. No. Flame squad coming in on the rear of the machine gun. Where is that UC? Okay, it's having to deal with these greens up here. Can't contribute, and uh, looks like Brosrace is going to have to retreat. But the allies do have two VPs under their control right now. And uh, finally got a fuel under control as well, so things looking quite good for them. But the Axis did, you know, get fuel slightly early. In fact, had double fuel for a, maybe about a minute, so do have the slight edge in ticking. Be interesting to see how quick these two teams put up their fuel caches. And the caches do now cost uh, 50 manpower more, so it may weigh into their judgments. 
Oh, nasty mortar shell wipes four models. Squad down. Oh, we got some smoke there. Machine gun covering the middle. Guys, really battling to try and hold on to the island here. But it looks like they're losing now. Thanks to these uh, reinforcements from Nagano. Oh, but he gets suppressed by that Maxim. And we actually have a Ford Assembly going up here for Ontario. That could be the start of a very strong hold for the Allies. That Ford reinforcement. Very handy. Especially on steps where the treat paths are very long. Compared to uh, something like Hill 400. Looks like this could be the end of the M3, but he gets out just in the nick of time. It actually gets decrewed. Abandoned, rather. So it could have uh, a little bit more life in it, yet. So pioneers close in, and they actually kill it and then retreat. Playing it safe there. But yeah, as you saw, that M3 in the north has led to a lot of uh, map control up there. Pretty much dominating the north, all thanks to the M3. So, as I said before, very recommended. If you're a Soviet and pretty much either of these two spawns to go to the north and use your M3. It is very strong up there. But now we're starting to see some 222s, some AECs. A few of the slightly more durable light vehicles. Looks like the Allies have also pushed that machine gun from the fuel. So the Axis are now a bit on the back foot. However, they do have uh, a fuel cache down right now. Oh, there goes 222. AC takes care of that. A lot of mortars for the Axis. They are going heavy on the mortars and all oh, staying right next to each other, getting bombed by the Soviet. Oh, it actually gets decrewed. Here come a whole bunch of greens and fox greens to the north. So like they're diverting some resources away from the island now. Trying to capture up here in the north, maybe get a bit more munitions control. And convert that also into uh, some control of this fuel. Try fight away from that forward reinforcement point. So we've got a mortar pit going up here now. That seems like the Allies have won the battle for the island and I mean I don't want to criticize but you know they did send three men there straight away whereas the Axis sent one man uh, to the north one man come to the middle two to the south this is, a, is that a skin or is that just my graphics card bugging out probably the latter Though I haven't kept up with the skins. Oof. And yeah, the Axis are in deep trouble here. Very little map control. Looks like they are indeed abandoning the island. Don't know if they know that there's a Ford Assembly back here, but... Either way, they're just uh, trying to avoid the strong, strong point here. There's no point in running into a million machine guns and mortars. I'm going to try, try attack a uh, weaker point. Now I've got control of the VPs in the north. But now the allies are also rotating. Fire rain down for both sides. 
And here is the T-70 that's chasing away these squads. Looks like Isildur went for fast tier 4. So you're going for a light vehicle. So that's certainly going to help help the allies in the control of the north. Having a light vehicle up there, uncontested. Well, when I say uncontested, you know, obviously there's a little kitten, but... There's not enough to cover the entire north of the map. That it's a huge area. More cash is going down for the Axis allies to need to invest in units. And uh, seem to be converting that into some good map control. But carry on's force has got pushed back largely on the back of the uh, damage this T70 took. Couldn't really contest all those grenadiers and of course the fusiliers. Which does mean we might see the Yak Tiger this game. Still going to be very strong in the uh, middle of the map on steps, despite the nerfs it's received. Oh. Squad trying to get a, a snare on the T70, but it looks like it's above 100 health, so I don't think it'll go down here. There it goes. Yeah, too much health. Certainly going to slow it down and make it ineffective, maybe even for the next minute and a half or so. Let's just have control got control of the center right now but certainly been set back in their fuel. Chusha already targeting all these mortar teams. Extremely early Kachusha here. Sounds like we've got a smoke raid here. The it kind of looks like it too. A lot of smoke. I'm sure my frame rate is absolutely tanking. Some base health action coming in. Got another Ford assembly in a further Ford's position. Cover a wire <laughs> and ends up getting destroyed altogether. There's a rather splendid Cromwell ready to go. And you heard it, Cromwell. We've got a P4 up here in the north as well, as well as a Rakitin. Texas have had uh, slightly better control since abandoning the fight for the island. Things seem to have stabilized for them a bit. Cromwell not going to the north though. towards those mortar teams again. Oops. Spazzing out on the mouse controls there. Looks like he cancelled that the PS station. Gonna go for one perhaps slightly further back. 
lot of bars now. Making their push forwards. Yeah, quite a lot of units here for the Axis as well as those mortars just repositioned and a lot of damage. Is this barrage going to come in onto that machine gun though? Missing. The models are very spread out. The gun is here, the rest of the squad's back here. The rest of the crew. Should I say? Another P4, this time for Isildur. Now there's this brush. Ooh! Maxim decrews. Stolen Maxim. Oh, is he going to steal that at the cost of his green squad? Interesting. Will he get away with it though? Like it. And Terrace Penals trying to chase here, trying to get that sticky search along. It looks like this uh, T34 is going to go down to Panzer Fours here, though. As well as a repair station. The enemy has destroyed one of our vehicles. So it's a good, good first blood there for the Axis. Taking out both the T70 and the uh, T34 in the north. Here comes the Cromwell. Bounces, connects with the front alarm the there. If we'll try to chase away, but the Cromwell should be able to outrace it. I could have Panzer Force a little bit slower than the regular one being weighed down by those skirts. T34 85 for Brosfast, he's going for advanced warfare. I mean, no. Uh, Armor assault. Similar. We've both got a radio <laughs> intercept and uh, T3485. And there is the first Panther for Nagano. Interesting to see uh, he doesn't go for a commander that has smoke. We've seen previously smoke on Panthers makes them very hard to kill in these 44 games. It's a huge asset. Panther coming in for a crazy flank here. And into some bazookas though, has to give that up. Panther going in for a uh, crush attempt. Taking an tank grenade. Nexus really need some rocket artillery right about now. Imagine blasting this with the Panzer with or similar. Probably would have been better if one of the people who went for Panther went for rocket artillery instead first try to get their rocket artillery up early, start vetting it up early, as the allies have. There's one tank, some stealth for kittens, laying an ambush. And point, oh, he's, he's a sticky satchel off there. Oh, he's gone to destroy these anti tank guns. No, it's not. Close. <laughs> I wonder if they. Ch I actually haven't seen a sticky satchel since the uh, patch. I wonder if they still manage to. Or whatever units next to the uh, vehicle. So we've got a bunker up here ready for the MG. And the Axis have done a pretty good job of controlling these two northern VPs. They are still struggling for fuel, but at least they've got quite a lot of caches down, whereas the Allies have uh, no caches down. But have had a uh, superior resource control so far. 
instantly gets the vision block in there. Kind of negating that smoke. I'm just seeing see if we got the quad here though. I'm so worried about those strafes which seem to be very popular. We do have quite a lot of them though. <laughs> The access loadout. Another smoke raid. Kachusha barrage. Oh, getting a few wipes there as well. Is it double Kachushas now? It is indeed. But the Axis have been picking off the Allied tanks piece by piece. They seem to be losing uh, infantry at a similar rate. Oh, and there is a Firefly. Still got to be careful. Doesn't want to chase any further with the Firefly there and support. T34 chases forwards. Abandons. And there are a lot of mines here. It's wise not to chase any deeper with that Panther. As you can see, he hasn't gone for the machine gun upgrade on that. Maybe he's trying to save everything he can for those Stuklos Airport strafes. Without the uh, machine gun upgrade, Panther's not very strong against infantry. We've got a push here from Nagano in the south. She senses some weakness down here, but really needs some rocket artillery to soften up all these anti tank guns. There's a lot of mines here as well. We gotta be careful. The Allies are doing a really good job of uh, mining up. Because there's one way that the Axis can make stuff happen is, you know, using the mobility of the Panthers. You know, with a lot of mines down that really limits what the Panthers can do. Oh! The briefly exposed his rear armor. Always make short sure work of that penal squad. Got a few repair stations up here, though, for the Allies. Next trading blows are more favourable to them. Don't have to worry about those repairs. They're pushing forwards now. It looks like the Fireflies coming up here as well. So he's trying to bait them in, perhaps. The allies not having too much luck penetrating with their mediums. Next is pull back. Okay, in comes the planes for Brosras, the Isle 2 strafe. Quite a lot of damage to this infantry. Will we see the AA mode activated on the Schwer? We should. Haven't seen it yet. Rockets coming in as well. Clearing out the mortar team. Here comes a glider behind enemy lines. We're going to let loose with those gamma bombs very soon. Axis on the back foot here. We've got an SU 85 up here now. That is big problems. Commandos did a lot of damage but get wiped on retreat. Both of those team weapons got killed. Looks like Nagano's pushed him out too much either. Like it's about to go down. It's really five so strong up here in the north with its focus sight mode on. But uh, oh, he's, he can't. Can't spot these stealth raccoons with this focus sight. Oh my gosh. This is a Brit ability. Assault operation. I think this ability is actually slightly broken. 
I believe it still allows the squads to retreat with a speed bonus, same speed bonus that they run with normally. So I don't know what kind of speed bonus it gives. Maybe it's about like 30% or whatever. But they also seem to retreat with the same speed bonus. So a very strong ability. Okay, in comes two cloaks air support in the north. So the Axis is making a big push. We've got two, three Panthers coming forwards. They're going in after all these tanks up here. We've got some more tanks rotating. Another two cloaks air support even further into enemy territory with this push. And these Panthers are going all the way, going after the Firefly now. There's actually a Katusha spawning just at the second. It's unfortunate timing. Panther goes all the way to base, picks that up, but could go down to these bazookas, depending on their penetration. No, don't penetrate too uh, frequently there, and do get away. Got some more action. These two tanks in the north got isolated. By this too close air support and down goes must have been about four medium tanks there for the allies good push by the axis did cost them uh, a lot of munitions though it looks like those planes have actually been shot down they did the allies did invest in uh, anti-air remember there's that quad on the field So well coordinated push by the Axis and now uh, they netted themselves a lot of uh, enemy vehicles still lacking still lacking in the uh, rocket artillery department though got a Panzer worth for now for Scotch looks like it's done one barrage but as I said it's quite important to get your rocket artillery early in these team games it's generally quite easy to defend it and uh, getting them up to generally vet 2 is when they gain their cooldown bonus is very very powerful and there as quickly as possible can make a huge impact on the game we've got an IL2 coming in this time for Brosras got a lot of tanks with pintle machine guns so maybe we'll also see that anti-aircraft mode activated hopefully yeah with this many pintles alone that's enough anti-air to take down those R2s so a recon run perhaps from rayon major recon pass it's got a priest targeting the uh, Mechanized HQ. Got a Yag Tank up here now for us to. So that's. That could be the start. I mean, the Allies lost a lot of tanks before. Now, with the Yag Tank on the field, they're going to really struggle against the Axis armor, but they do have the artillery advantage quite firmly. That's the eternal struggle. <laughs> Axis tanks versus allied artillery. Oh, I don't tell me he's worth in this. No, he's not. Worthing over here. So you've got a few mines. Start. BP's you know quite close, not out of hand yet for either either team. But the axis, oh, but the allies have really locked down this iron really well with that forward assembly. That was a really good idea, Ryan Terrier.
LG Green's funneling in here. Could be vulnerable to rocket artillery, and here it comes. Ooh. Oh, and the Scott too. They're not moving. They're staying firm. Got some white phosphorus as well, just so rub some phosphorus into the wounds. Uh oh. 85's got over eager. There goes one of them. The other one's gonna go down too. But Stu Plus Esport going. Goes for Ram. Gets taken down before that. Now the Panther's going after the AA. Try and knock that out. Jackson's down here. Is that another? There is another close air support strafe coming in. Trying to take out the Jackson, I think. Gets the Stuart. Looks like the Panther's gonna escape with the Blitz. I'm not sure about this one though. Deep in the enemy territory, facing off against this into tank gun and all these bazookas. He's gonna have to do some fancy driving to get away. Looks like the Jackson did go down. Oh, but this Panther runs over two mines now. Could go down to this Schumer Firefly if the Firefly can uh, work the ranges correctly. It's like a Panzerwerfer barrage forced away those bazooka squads. And uh, that was uh, Scotch's Panther. Looks like it went down, but. well worth it. Good push by the Axis again, but once again relying on those two close air supports to make it happen. Let's follow up there by Ontario, bringing in the Firefly as well. The Axis have made some really big impact. Their Panthers. Some really nice pushes. Seeing an IS2 from Brosras. I think this is a good choice instead of the 85s. So the extra durability against the Panthers really comes in handy. And if you can get that IS2 to VET2 when it gains the uh, range bonus, you can uh, duke it out really well with the Panthers. But yeah, just the chance to bounce against the Panthers is uh, really a huge asset over the 85s. Two just rolling straight up here. Really close to the Panzerwerfer. It doesn't have sight of it though, but that could have gone quite poorly. For Nagano. Yagtiger looks like it's thinking about rotating more towards the middle. Away from the north. Oh, IS2 gonna expose his rear armor to this Panther down here. from both teams. They're trying to peek here. Yeah, stealth capping here. Nice work. Okay, we've got another close air support strafe coming in here. Oh, and the AA gets taken down as well. That's bad news. This close air support strafes just tearing into these allied tanks here. Oh, Panther as well from this angle. Looks like one of those Jacksons is going to go down. Perhaps not. It's deterred by all those bazookas. They're yeah, taking down the, uh, the quad. Good pick up there. Well, Eastfield 5 looks like it's about to go down. Centaur ACAC tank ready and waiting for orders. Well, perhaps not. A lot of tank destroyers here in the north for the Allies, but not going to help too much against those fortune areas. 
the Nexus are trying to get that triple cap cooking, try and drain out the allies. But uh, that last push wasn't as fruitful as the others. All they really got from that was the quad. I suppose getting rid of that is useful, but... Okay, here comes a big push in the north from the Allies. So they're closing in on this Panzer IV, but the Jagdtag is there, so is a Raketen. Oh, but here come a lot of PTRS Penals. Big trouble for the Axis in the north. Oh no, and this thing's spinning around. Raketen facing the wrong direction. Panther's coming up here in support. We've got close to his support as well being called in. Sticky Satchel does huge damage. And that's going to be the end of the Act Tiger. It's a bit tardy in his response to that push by the Allies. Ends up costing him. Good push by the Allies. Looks like they lose one T-34 in response, but... Oh, now the Allies have actually got the Centaur. This thing is a machine at shooting down. Close air support strafes, this thing is so strong, it's probably half of the reason why he got it. Already got two vehicles destroyed, which will be two planes from that strafe. Much better than the uh, quad. What was that? Oh, he's going after this panther and he's got, oh he gets it with the... PTRS penal staying relevant in the late game. PTRS is, you know, you don't sleep on them, they've got high deflection damage, so even against the heavily armored targets, they still do quite quite good damage. Now the egg target deployed. Seeing the engine upgrade. Opening up on the T-34. So we've got a lot of allied tanks down here in the south. Looks like they might be thinking about making a push down here soon. Oh, still takes heavy damage. Down it goes. These fireflies are not to be trifled with. That's a real flashpoint for the Stug there. An unfortunate one. The 200 damage from the, each of the Fireflies plus the 160 from the Zis add up to 560, the exact amount of the Stug. So generally the Stug would take four shots to kill against our most, most tanks, but not in this case. The extra 40 damage on these Fireflies making the difference. Oh, it's going to get a Faust on this here, but there are a lot of fireflies up here. Looks like the uh, Centaur actually went down. I didn't notice that. Opening up the door for this uh, AA Strafe. Not chasing him with the Panthers with the Blitz, however. Sticky Satch on one of them. More Panthers coming forwards, going after these Fireflies. Another start close air support strafe, I imagine. Now they're switching targets to the Centaur, perhaps hoping to knock that down so it can't shoot down their planes. There goes the Centaur. Now these Fireflies in jeopardy, Panthers chasing forwards, Vet3 Panther leading the charge. And he gets it. One of the Fireflies is down. What about the other one? He's one more shot to connect. If he misses this, it'll be criminal. There it goes. Looks like we've seen some uh, other action here from the Allies, though. In the south, they're making a push at the same time, taking 
a lot of the Axis forces down here out. So uh, some big blows being traded here for both teams. But a uh, good, good teamwork by the Axis pushing all their Panthers at once with their coordinated uh, their support strafes. They're working well as a team. Oh, look at this march of the anti-tank guns here. Ice 2 leading the charge. Got a lot of damaged Panthers here, but so is the Yak Tiger. Yak Tiger's on the sea. There's no trouble dealing with the ice too, but gotta be careful about those anti tank guns coming in behind. Oh, and here come the Jacksons. The Yak Tiger goes got himself exposed here. The kitten not, not being well micro, but here come the Panthers. Ice 2 in trouble. Ice 2 looks like it's gonna go down. The Panthers come in in support. Got some kind of artillery strike coming in here though. It might be our uh, time on target. We have lost one of our armored vehicles. Jack Tiger's got main gun destroyed, but still alive. And tank guns are marching their way up here trying to hunt down whatever remains. The enemy has silenced one of our anti-tank guns. Tank guns getting taken down. It's 35 on the chase. It's got the focus sight mode on. Still got a few Panthers here though. Yak Tiger gonna go down. Bouncing, bouncing. Oh, missing. SU-85 goes down. But the Yak Tiger still in desperate trouble. Finally goes down to this Jackson. Panthers trading blows here with these tank destroyers, taking a lot of damage from these tank guns. SU-85 goes down, but the Jackson escapes, and these Panthers are all so low. We've got all these anti-tank guns and PTRS penals charging for us, trying to pick up the scraps. But it might be too late. These Panthers are getting repaired up mighty quickly. And uh, looks like the Panthers are going to escape. But the Allies are still... Favorable scatter on the rockets there. Oh, don't lose your Vet3 Panther here. Don't lose your Vet3 Panther. Oh, it's bouncing everything though. He's getting really lucky. Here comes another IS-2. Vet3 Panther blitzing away. IS-2 a bit too slow. Looks like the Panther's going to get away, but the Allies are applying a lot of pressure here. They've pushed the axes right back. damage being put onto these two tanks. Once again close air support being used to defend here. Take the blitz in the way now. Fresh Panthers coming in. This is an old fashioned 4v4 Panther spam. What oh, is that? Crossrass is aisle 2. Okay, we have a wall of Jacksons here. I pity the fool that runs into these these bad boys. But we also have a wall of Panthers. Ice 2 leading away, trying to soak the damage. But the Jacksons doing some massive damage. Deterring the Panthers from chasing any further. They're trying to get the hell out of there. They don't want any part of those three Jacksons. Amongst this rocket artillery trading, it seems like the allies are still getting 
a hit in the rocket artillery gang. Okay, we've got some anti-tank strafes coming in now. Panthers coming round from the north. Oh, but look at all these PTRS penals. Those Panthers are going to get destroyed. Oh no, he overextended with his Panthers. Both of them go down. We get one tank destroyer, but that was not worth it. And I think both the uh, planes have been shot down now, so he's got to be careful. So he wants to kill this Panzer Rick, but he can't. He can't kill the Panther Rick. It's just too many tank destroyers up here. And that was very costly for the Axis. They just lost a tremendous amount. They lost three Panthers there, but one uh, one tank in return. And even one of these Panthers got abandoned, so could soon be fighting against them. That was a crushing blow. And look at all these repair stations. The Allies now have kind of moved their focus. I mean, they've got almost nothing down here. And all, all of this up here. Maybe the Axis will be wise to uh, have a look at what's going on on the bottom of the map there. Maybe see a tank down there to have a wee walk around. Could do a lot of damage. Could clear all of this out. Open up the cap or the Axis and they do kind of need the VPs right now. Yeah, it looks like the Axis are just not getting any machine gun upgrades on their Panthers, which is very interesting, and just going 100% munitions into the Suplos Airsport Strafes. Very interesting tactic. Ooh, here comes a Werfer Barrage. There's a couple models. That would have been wise to take it more towards the retreat path slightly. Depends if it does take a while for those rockets to actually start landing. Gives you a decent time to react and look at this. Bias 2 leading the way behind behind him. A whole wall of Jacksons. This Panther's gonna go down so quickly. Oh nice attack round through the smoke. Yeah. And this is where losing those two Yag Tigers like that really comes back to bite the Axis. A Yag Tiger in this situation would be so strong. Oh, so easily. Keep up the pressure. They're down to 100 points. Okay, we've got one close air support straight for Scotch. Looks like they are sending some infantry down here, but really need to send some tanks down. And here come the Panthers now, rotating away from the north, as I suggested earlier. Looks like they actually started and mixing a few more into tank guns as well, trying to take, take out these massive amounts of tank destroyers. Oh no, runs over a mine. Here comes the anti-tank strafe, but I don't know if they can save them. It's like they actually just kind of keep reversing. This is how Firefly could go down here. If those planes target it, don't get shot down. Oh, that's the USF AA half track. This thing is a beast at shooting down tank. Uh, aircraft, not tanks. <laughs> this thing is like probably the most. Oh, it's between this and the Centaur for the most powerful units that's shooting down aircraft. Those Panthers that made their way down to the bottom. Actually, one of them got knocked out by their mass of Jacksons. So that didn't work out too well for him. Looks like he took out the T-34, but it's a bad trade, T-34 for a Panther. This Katush is now well vetted up with the cooldown bonuses. And I feel like that last... Uh, Plus the air support strafe was a bit wasted and they needed to uh, coordinate it again with a push. 
multiple Panthers instead of just kind of calling it in in a more defensive manner. Here we go, we've got four Panthers charging forwards, but we've also got three Jacksons and the Ice 2 there, and now Firefly as well. This is not going to go well for the Axis, especially if they keep missing. Killing blows. He gets that one, but he's taking a lot of damage on the rear armor. Down goes another Jackson. Oh, but here come the T-34s coming in on the flank of all these Panthers. Panthers trying to escape. Trying not to expose their rear armor. Panthers blitzing away. But they're getting caught with the parving. Oh, and they run over a mine. This T-34 is just streaming in. And the mines continue to cause headaches for the Axis. These T-34s are going take out most of the remaining Panthers. There's one more. One soldier left. Uh, that might be the end of the game. Yeah, they're called GG. Valiant stuff. Some incredible tank play here. Some admirable pushes by the Axis, but I think what really cost them the game is losing them the, the two uh, Yag Tigers. They just never really recovered from that. And then they kind of used their too close air supports. Yeah, they, I think they need to save up for two close air supports because the Allies had it well covered with the AA. So at least if they use two at the same time, they probably wouldn't be able to shoot them all down in time and at least some of them would get in for a second pass. But yeah, very entertaining game. Well played by both teams. Oh, what a doozy, what a game. Some, yeah, just heroic plays. Really good stuff. Well, I'll wrap on that, guys. If you'd like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye, and good luck.